Hello, welcome to Marketing Matters, the show where we explore all things marketing and uncover those things that matter for you and your success. I'm your host, Denise Millay, and my hope and mission is to bring marketing and technology to you in a way that's useful, without jargon, complexity, or confusion, so you can grow your business, expand your impact in the world, and build your best life. Today's episode is called Marketing and Books, with my special guest, Holly Totten. In this episode, we're going to discuss the benefits a book can bring to you, your business, and your marketing efforts. So hang on. Before we dive in, though, I want to share a quote with you from Ernest Hemingway. There is no rule on how to write. Sometimes it comes easily and perfectly. Sometimes it's like drilling rock and blasting it out with charges. So I bring this to you today because we have a perception from our early years of what it means to be a writer and an author. And these perceptions sometimes shadow what we believe in our own abilities and whether we can be a writer or an author. And I wanted to share this quote because I wanted you to see that even a Nobel, Nobel Prize winner um, can believe and understand that writing is not an easy thing. But it's attainable for everyone because there are no rules. Everyone can write. You just have to be willing to do it. So we're going to talk about marketing and books. And my special guest, Holly Totten, is here with me today. And Holly is an entrepreneur. She's a writer, writing coach, podcaster. But she'll really, really quickly tell her favorite title is Nini. With over three decades of writing experience, Holly helps others share their stories through writing and her podcast. She lives in Central Texas on a small ranch with her husband, Eric. Together, they have two grown children with amazing spouses and four grandchildren. So I want to share with you the magic of Holly. She's done wonders for me and my ability to write, and I know that she will have a great impact on you as well. Hey, Holly. How are you? So nice to have you here. Oh, I'm good, Denise. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. I want to share with um, my audience of Marketing Matters your wonderful gifts about books and how they can fit into a business owner's toolkit, I guess is what I'd say. So in your impression, writing a book for marketing, what are the benefits of that for a business owner? Oh, wow, Denise, that's a great question. You know, um, I think one of the biggest assets of writing a book for a business owner is to extend your audience and extend your reach because we have people that um, read that may not, you know, find you in any other form. And you know, it by having a book out there, it gets it to into the hands of of a lot of people that, like I said, may not even you know find you in another aspect. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. And I also think too, it helps with um, building authority too. So if you feel like you're um, depending on the topic you choose, but if you have something that's a specialty or you know your special skill or as we call it your special sauce. Um, having a book about that topic that you've written helps cement your authority in the area and spread that message around too. So I think that's absolutely, really yeah, yeah. yeah, credibility. You know, a, a book that's builds great. credibility. You know, that's a great word, and and that is another big thing for having a book, um, especially for business owners. You know, I don't know that um, any of us are necessarily experts, but we have um, a lot of experience in our fields. And when you share that in a written form, it does help build your credibility because it lets people understand the depth of your knowledge for it. Right, right. Yeah. So it kind of demonstrates exactly that yeah. you can, what you can do and, and shares that with people. So it's just an amazing thing. And 
you and I have been in this uh, author intensive, new author intensive that you're running. And um, it's opened my eyes to so many wonders of what a book can do for a person, because I've always wanted to write one, but I didn't really have a clear picture of where it fit into my life. And the process of sharing your skills with people and impacting their lives and their businesses is really exciting. And so what advice would you have for people who are on the fence about whether they are, they can write a book or be an author or? Yeah, you know, Denise, my tagline kind of is that I know, or I understand that not everyone is a writer, but everyone can be an author. And I think a lot of times what keeps people from writing is the fear of writing itself, thinking that they they can't, they're not good enough, they don't know what to say. And um, I just think that our stories are so much more powerful than that, 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 that the fact that we have stuff to share, whether it's the know-how, the knowledge, you know, a, a story of an experience or a combination, you know, um, I think that should override the fear of not being able to do it because there's too many ways out there to get your book out. You know, there's too many people that can help you, um, you know, different ways, you know, some, some people have books out and they've never written a word, but they're still the author. The Mm -hmm. author, you know, really is just the person whose words, the book, the, the words of the book, who they belong to is the author basically. And, you know, whether you actually pin those words yourself or have someone help them do it for you, um, you still get the same results. You still have a book and your information and your story is out. And so my encouragement to people is to really think about your message and who needs to hear what it is that you have to say and don't let the fear get in your way. That's great. Great, great advice. I guess I I always think too that there's, um, or maybe I grew up thinking there might be a stigma to not writing your own book and to not actually penning the words of being the writer but being the orchestrator and the sharer of the content, how the words get organized, you're, you're in control of that through the process anyway. So it's your final say about what it's going to be. So it's really, there are so many different ways to get it done. And you do editing and help people get their books books refined and off off out of their minds. Out of, out of your head and onto the page. <laughs> onto the page. So... Do you find that um, that just helps certain people or is that something that um, is only for people who can afford it? Like, do you think everybody can have it, take advantage of that? You know, I think they can, Denise. Um, and, and, you know, anytime you enlist a professional for help, it's going to cost some money, mm-hmm. um, but it's not an overly, I mean, doesn't have to be an overly expensive adventure and so uh and then you also have to think about the returns you know that you will get in your not necessarily on book sales because you know I mean there will be book sales but when you think about the growth from your business that you can you know get back from having a book that supplements what you do that complements what you do Mm -hmm. you know that um, you know, so you have to think about all those things, you know, whenever you're considering uh, putting an investment in. But I do think that it's available for, I would say, most people. You know, there's there's different levels and, um, you know, just different ways to do it. And they should research all that. Sure. So, so if somebody's, you know, thinking about they're contemplating a book, what are the things that they have to decide in order to begin that journey? Like, what is it they have to wrap their heads around and and get clear on to do it? Yeah, you know, there's there's a lot. Um, But I I think really, Denise, the first steps are really um, visiting with yourself, sitting down and having coffee with yourself and understanding why is it that you want to put a book out? You know, what is it that you have to share and what's your purpose? You know, do you just, are you just wanting to tell a story? Are you wanting to help grow your business? You know, are you wanting to strictly impart information on how to do something? You know, what is your purpose? And then I think once you, the purpose and the goal. And then I think once you have that really in your mind, the the steps moving forward become easier. 
But I think without that, under without understanding the goal, you know, what it is that, that you want to accomplish with the book and then why you want to write the book, I, I think you're kind of spinning your wheels. I think those are very important steps. And why you want to write the book can be as simple as you've always wanted to be an author. You've always had an idea to share. You have a passion, right? It doesn't have to be this, you know, complex thing. It, it can be what's in your heart right well, yes and and the why really is what you hope to get out of the book as an author you know what what is your whole reason for doing this it's something I've always wanted to do there you go you know I, I want to do this to leave a legacy for my children yeah so what it doesn't have to be like you say it doesn't have to be long and complicated just a, a very and a lot of times the why is a very simple statement mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the the goals for the business, I mean, they can be as simple as, you know, you want to grow your business. You want to have something to share your authority or help solve problems or, or whatever, yeah. right? Or actually, exactly. help solve problems would be a purpose, really, wouldn't it? Yes, it so. would. Um, but, you know, the goal is really what your ultimate outcome of the book is. It's what you want it to be, you know, and, mm -hmm. and your business. And when you're writing for your business, you would lump that thought into the goal, you know, I want to, I want to put this information out there because I want to be able to increase my audience. I want to be able to uh, become a speaker on this topic, mm -hmm. you know, and so, you know, just whatever your, um, you know, think about what's your purpose. Why do you really want to put this information in other people's hands? That's so, that's so interesting. I, I think that, um, I think another place that I struggled when I was trying to put together my idea for how I was going to do this is just what to write about, because there's so many things that it could be, and it gets so overwhelming. I mean, like, what do you tell people when they're like, I have no idea what to write? You know, we all have so many ideas, <laughs> but how do you oh, narrow it down, you know? Yeah. And, you know, narrowing down is hard and it, it is also an important step. And typically when people first start writing and they first start getting their ideas down and a lot of people speak their ideas, Denise, instead of actually sitting and writing, they, you can record them mm -hmm. and you have all of that there and you can put it into a transcript so that it's it's written, but it's in it's in broken writing because we don't speak the way we write, but all the right. information there, you know, so that's just just throwing out that out there. That's two different ways. But it's okay to go ahead and let all of that flood, all of your ideas, you know, everything that you think you're wanting to do, wanting to talk about, let it flood and get it out. And then you can take that and say, okay, for this first book, and I know when I say first, I'm, uh, that means there's one to follow, but typically there is. And so for this first book, what I really want to talk about is X, you know, whatever that is. And then you go through and you look through all that information that you either spoke and have a transcript for or recording for, or the, the notes that you've taken and find the information that goes along with whatever that X is, you know, and from there you would build your book. And so, you know, a lot of people think, well, I've got to tell the whole story from the beginning to the end in one book. And you don't because you overwhelm your readers. Somebody wants to read that. Right, you know, you, right. you got to get to the point, you know, War and, and peace was only good for Tolstoy. Not for <laughs> That's hilarious. Yes. <laughs> well, okay, that was a dense book. Yes, it was. <laughs> tiny, tiny print. Uh, so, well, that's genius, actually, because you think about, um, I guess I always had this this view of authors you know and they would have an outline and they would write specific paragraphs and they'd start at the beginning and they'd work to the end and what you're basically saying is <laughs> just start talking just start just writing it. and just start and then piece it together which is something I don't think they teach in school that's for sure no they don't because they teach that and I'm a retired teacher and I've been there you know we teach the outline and the you know the formal writing process but what I have found through editing books for others and and helping people with their books is the writing process there is no really no such thing because the rules were made to be broken especially in writing you know, and so you do the things that um, 
that make you unique and and what you're trying to to get across and i always say that you've really got to keep your reader in mind and you know that that's so important you know figure out who it is you're talking to and keep them in mind and put the information together to benefit them right. you know and so if you're you know i mean and, and that includes the language you use the um, you know, the, the sentence structure, you know, uh, you always want to keep the reader in mind over a grammar rule that, you know, might be prim and proper because that's not really how writing works. Oh, and that, that's a wonderful, wonderful yeah. thing to say, because it is true. <laughs> we all have so much baggage from, uh, the wonderful training we got as youngsters, <laughs> um, but when we're embarking on this new avenue of being an author and we have all these perceptions that we've built up over time and the things we've been taught and the things we've read, some amazing pieces we've read, you compare yourself to that and you kind of think, well, I can't do that. You know, I can't, I can't do this. I can't do that. Well, what can you do is you can speak it. You can write it on paper. You can type it. You can you know, do an hour a day, you can do two hours a day, you could do one day a week, whatever works for you, right? And it has to be cohesive in the end, but you can have an editor help you with your grammar and your punctuation or um, staying in touch with your audience is just so important because you really don't want to sound aloof or above, you want to really relate to the people you're trying to talk to, right? Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, a lot of times I think when people are wanting or thinking about writing a book, I think what comes to their minds are the things that we did read through school. And those were literary works. You know, those are, and it's not the type of book that you put out in a business, you know, so, uh, you know, and there is a difference and, and that's not what most people set out to write. It's not a, you know, they don't want to sit, be a literary scholar you know, that's a whole different ball game, but that's what we tend to compare ourselves to because we know it's great literature. Right, right. And, and but that's not what we're writing as a business owner, as an entrepreneur. We're not writing great literature. We're writing great information. Oh, yeah. It's got to be relatable. And that's so, so important. So if you were starting out in a business and you're trying to put your marketing toolkit together as social media, websites, all these things, but a book is a medium that you can use in so many different ways, right? You can use it for speaking engagements. You can use it for a gift for a new client. You can, you know, there's so many different things you can use it for. So it's really great to have and worth the time you and effort you put into it for sure, right? I, I agree a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. So are you excited to work on your book? I know you're working. On I it too. am. I am. I am. You know, I'm, I'm not a published author and I, but I'm, I'm working on that. I will be soon. And that's very exciting to me. I've helped so many other people, you know, write their stories, write their books, write their blogs, write their articles, whatever, you know, I've done that for so many people. I, I haven't taken the time and I'm not even going to say time. I haven't taken the step to do it myself. And, um, and it's not because I don't have the know-how it's the vulnerability and, you know, it's hard for everyone to get past and, and even people that do that kind of stuff for a living, you know, and so, but I am excited. I have the, I do have a, a book coming out soon that is a compilation, um, that's exciting that I'm, and you are part of it. I hope I can say that on here, but it's so exciting. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah, I have too. I, I mean, it's it, and it will be soon. And then, um, and I have a couple of other books in the works that that I'm ready to get started on. You know, and I, I'm just like everyone else. Even though I help other people, I had to kind of, you know, get past myself and get past those feelings and know that that what you have to say is more important than the fear of not saying it. And so, yeah. I think writing seems so private sometimes mm -hmm. to us that in sharing those thoughts it it transcends spoken language in in that it's closer to your mind and it's almost seems more intimate to oh, share it words, is. I think and uh personally I know once you start talking about something or writing something you don't know where it's going to take you so it's an increased incredibly 
revelatory process where you you kind of start in one place and you kind of go, oh, I didn't expect that to come back to my <laughs> mind. You know, I didn't expect right. that to be part of this. And so it's personally very, very rewarding, but it's very scary sometimes. It's a little bit intimidating. And- you know, and that makes me think, Denise, you know, I, I said I was, a, I'm a retired teacher, but for a long time, I taught first grade oh. and I really worked on writing skills with my first grade, first graders. And as far as writing stories and even as a six-year-old, what they wrote was private and they could feel that, you know, when you started mm-hmm. looking at it, sometimes they didn't want to, you know, they'd hold it up tight and, you know, they didn't want anybody to see, you know, and sometimes it was okay to let you see and, or maybe their friend could see it, but the teacher couldn't. And, you know, and I know they didn't really understand in their heart where that was coming from, but I think it just is an innate feeling of when you put something down that comes from within you know, you're revealing yourself and, and that's hard to let go of. And it's hard to open up from, you know, or other people with that. I'm not sure I'm saying that the right way, but it's, it was just interesting to me that I even saw that in young children. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, First graders. Wow. Right. I thought maybe fifth, sixth grade when you start to get, you know, shyer or, you know, hold back a little bit more as you mature, but no, (laughs) first grade. Great. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, we had spirals that they would write in and I, I have a little girl that's um had a little girl she's an adult now but in her spiral she took a rubber band and would put it around it and under that rubber band she would write a note and either say yes read or no read and so when I was going through and looking if she had no read on there then I knew she had written something she didn't want to share so I would just keep going you know I gave her that privilege you know any of them that wanted to but she was um she was a little more advanced in her writing than some of the others. And, you know, so there were times when she'd say, yes, you can read it or no, you can't read it, you know? So um, even at six, you know, so. Well, I'm excited as a business owner (laughs) to put my first book out there. I'm excited for your book because having a, a compilation like that is with the other people we've been working with. It's been so much fun and it's, and it's kind of unlocked it's easier to do now because I've unlocked this, that it's okay. <laughs> so you've made it, exactly. you've made it so much easier to do. And, uh, but it is a big task and I'm, I'm thinking that I'm going to give myself a good month and get it done and, and kind of do it. Cause I really think it's a wonderful thing to share. I want my users, the people that I'm working with, cause I'm trying to dispel the technology frustration I want to be able to to point someone to it who's really frustrated and I think it could really help them. So um, I know it can. I'm, I'm so excited about it for you. I hope so. We'll see. Um, Yeah. At least for the first book, we'll see what, as I've been told, I have many books in me. Yes, you do. (laughs) Someone told me that. So, (laughs) well, Holly, it's been wonderful having you here. I would like to wrap up and say, what's the one thing you would advise somebody to do if they're even thinking about writing a book? You know, I think the, I think the first step is to really talk to yourself and figure out why you're wanting to do this. You know, what is it that's, that is even giving you that inkling that you want to write a book? Mm-hmm. And I think if you can really hone in on that and understand the reason behind it, I think it'll make stepping forward much easier and and so that you realize that it's worth it. And, you know, Denise, I just, I encourage everyone to write. Of course, you know, I love to write, but I encourage everyone to to get their books out there because when we have things to share, we have knowledge to give people stories to share, you know, whatever the reason behind it is, when we have that and we don't do it, you know, we're, we are keeping other people from benefiting from the things we know and the things we've been through. And, and, you know, and selfish, I don't know that that's the right word because I don't think anybody doesn't do it because they're selfish, but I think, um, I think a lot of it is the fear, you know, and the fear of vulnerability, but I think if you really think about the outcome, it is so much more powerful than than just being afraid. And I think that's something we can get past. Yeah. Wow. Um, thank you. 
Yeah. Now, how can my um, viewers find you if they want to find you? And I would love more for, about what you do. Yeah, I would love for anybody to reach out to me. The best way probably is my website, Denise, and it's teachingyourselftolearn.com. Okay. Well, that's the name of my podcast. And so it's teachingyourselftolearn.com. Oh, you have a podcast too. I totally forgot. Um, we'll make sure we put that in the show description so everybody can reach out to you. And thank you again. It's been so oh, wonderful thank to have you. you. And I'm so excited to keep working with you on this. No, I'm looking forward to it too, Denise. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, but that was a fantastic interview. And I know Holly is had fun and she's done so much for me. If you would like to learn more about Holly, please go to her website at www.teachingyourselftolearn.com. You can find out all about her services and the other things she does. And please reach out to her if you have any questions. So, I have a free gift for you today. It's called Five Website Secrets to Make Sure Your Ideal Customers Find You. And you can find this at dmalay.com slash five, F-I-V-E. I'll give you a minute to make note of that and take a screenshot for later if you want. I want to let you know what I do in my business. I work with people to get their technology set up for marketing, uh, whether it's building their websites or digital products or courses, or whether it's getting the funnels and campaigns all set up for them to operate their business and, and run their sales flow. So if you have any questions, please visit my website at dmalay.com. Go to the contact page and reach out to me or send me an email at the email that's also listed there. Oh my goodness. I wanted to share with you that I have a new workshop as well. It's called Simple Ways to Make Yourself Findable Today. You can also find out more about this at my website, dmalay.com slash simple ways, all one word. And thank you. I'm so glad you could join me for this episode of Marketing Matters. I know how precious your time is, and my hope is that you came away from this episode with some nuggets you can apply to your business. My aim is to provide clear, useful info for you so that you can have a thriving business, amazing relationships with your customers and clients. And as always, if you have any questions, drop a post on my show Facebook page, Marketing Matters, or go to the contact page on my website and submit a question. And be here next week for our next episode where we will uncover more marketing topics that matter for you. Thanks so much. Bye.